Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so my name is uh, Katarina Gospic, and I have a PhD in neuroscience. And today I'm going to talk about the cautious brain, why we are so afraid of exploring these uncharted waters sometimes. And uh, I will also give you an advice how you can become a bit more brave. So let's get started. So we are going to start with an experiment. And uh, the scenario is like this. There is a horrible disease that has broken out in this building. And if you don't do anything, 600 people will die. But you are the responsible doctor in this building. And you can make the choice, uh, one out of two medical programs uh, that you can choose in order to save some people. And you have the following information. So with program number one, you will save 200 people. If you choose program number two, you have the information that the probability to save uh, 600 people is one third, and the probability to save no one is two thirds. So everyone who prefers alternative number one, raise your hand now. Okay, and everyone who prefers alternative number two, raise your hand. Okay, great. So now I want you to imagine the same scenario but you will have two new alternatives. So again, you're the responsible doctor, 600 people will die if you don't do anything, and you get the following information. With program number one, 400 people will die. And if you choose program number two, you get the information that the probability that no one will die is one third, and the probability that 600 people will die is two thirds. So how many of you prefer program number one? Raise your hand. And how many of you prefer program number two? Raise your hand. Okay, that's great. Because when I prepared this lecture, I tried to predict your behavior. And I predicted that you would choose program number one in the first slide and program number two in the second slide. And uh, that's how it looked like as a group, uh, the way you behave. And uh, I didn't know this because of my psychic abilities. The reason why I knew this was because I know how your amygdala works. And amygdala is your primitive emotional brain structure. And it tells you to choose program number one in the first slide, and it tells you to choose program number two in the second slide. And this means that you are stirred by your emotions. There is an emotional bias in your decision making. And according to economic theory, our behavior in this experiment is totally irrational. Because the thing is that if you look at these two alternative, and you calculated what's called the expected value, you will find that the expected value is the same for both programs. So if you put these figures here in this formula, you see that the expected value for the first alternative, that I call a sure win, is 200, and the expected value for the gambling option is also 200. But still, we have an emotional bias because most of us, we feel that the first option is a bit better. And that is because we are programmed by our brains to choose safe uh, wins. On the other slide, we observe uh, the opposite behavior. And again, both these alternatives, the sure loss and the gambling option, uh, they have the same expected value. But this time, we feel like we don't want to be responsible for sure for some people's death. So it means that we are prepared to gamble when it comes uh, to this kind of uh, framing. So taking this all together, it means that there is an emotional bias in our decision making, and we are wired to choose sure wins, and we are wired to avoid sure losses. So this is where the cautious brain comes in. We are wired to be cautious or a bit coward, if you want to <laughs> say that. So this takes us to the principles of decision-making. 
And that is that when we are choosing something, we always try to choose the alternative that's associated with the, the most reward and the least punishment or unpleasantness. And this means that most of you would prefer to eat chocolate cake rather than being eaten by a lion. <laughs> and I think you can see this emotional bias from a functional versus a non-functional aspect. Because if you're on the savanna and you encounter a lion, it feels quite good to follow your emotional bias, which is kind of running away from it, because that will increase your risk of survival. However, if you imagine your everyday problems, and for example, if you get a job offer uh, where they ask you if you want to move to India, for example, for a year, you might think that this is a bit scary because, you know, India is a very different country compared to Sweden and lots of things are different. And when things are unknown or uncertain to us, our amygdala tells us to run away from it. But in this con context, it might not be the most functional way of acting because by running away from such a great offer, we will actually miss out on some great opportunities really exploring these uncharted waters. So we need to learn when our emotions are functional for us, and we also need to identify when they're a bit non-functional, when they actually hinder us from discovering new things. So after talking about these fears and uncertainties and stuff, the question is, how do we fix this fear issue? And the answer to that question is with lots of brain power. And in order to illustrate this statement, we're now going to do a little quick experiment uh, where you will kind of feel the brain power that you also need to regulate your fears. So before we start, I want you to tell me with which color these words are written. Any suggestions? Yeah, you're sure? Ah, okay, that's really, really good. Because on my next slide, I will show you some words, one by one, and I want you to tell me with which color they are written. So I want you to name the ink color. Do you understand? Yeah? And I want you to do this as fast and as accurate as possible. So I say, ready, set, and now go. <laughs> that was amazing, guys. Yeah, just by listening to you, I could actually tell that some of you had a, a little bit of a problem with this task. <laughs> and the reason why this is so hard is because I created a conflict in your brain. So what happened was that uh, when I ask you to name the, the color of the ink, you actually have a default priority for reading out the word. So this is prioritized in your brain. But then I gave you an instruction telling you name the color of the ink. And this is not prioritized by default by your brain. So it means that you need to mitigate the priority for reading out the word. And you actually need to enhance the priority for naming the color of the ink. And all this occurs in your frontal lobe, uh, in a specific area that you see here called the anterior cingulate cortex. And this takes a second, but once you have thought about it a bit and used your brain power to change this priority in your brain, you can actually handle this task perfectly. And as some of you might have noticed, it became a bit easier in the end because then you were actually prepared for this task. And what I want to say with this is that the same kind of brain power that you used in this little experiment, this is the same kind of brain power that you need to use when you're afraid of something, when you are kind of sailing this uncharged water, because then your brain might prioritize that you should stay away from everything that's uh, scary and frightens you and such. That has the highest priority. But then there is a small li little part of your brain saying that, no, I want to explore, you know, there can be something exciting. And then again, you need to do this kind of operation 
and mitigate your fear response in order to increase priority for your exploration mode. So this is what I want you to remember from this little talk, that whenever you feel scared, remember this exercise and uh, be brave, use your brain power in order to explore these uncharged waters. Thank you very much.